Helping local businesses is a great way to build your design portfolio and find new clients. Today, I'm gonna to be redesigning the homepage for a coffee house here in Colorado and showing you my complete process along the way. It makes it feel so special and nostalgic, kind of like a hidden gem. That said, when you go to their website, you don't really get that same vibe. These photos are okay, but I think we could paint the picture better with a more intentional layout and photo choice. And it could definitely use a bit more style. This text is long and really hard to read on this background graphic. And overall, I don't really get much information or allure from this homepage. I'm not really pulled in by the coffee or the food or the ambiance. So we're going to change that. Okay, so I have the before screenshot here just to kind of keep us, just to kind of keep in mind what content we can pull from. And here is where we're going to design the after. So one thing that I want to tackle before we even get into the site is the logo. I just don't really think that the logo um, really says what it needs to say. So we have the before screenshot here in Figma, just to keep in mind what content that we have to pull from. And here is where we will design the new homepage. So like I said, I was kind of picturing this to be a lot more cozy, a lot more um, maybe like nature driven. Um, I'm picturing, you know, walking up to it or biking up to it from the trail um, and sort of just coming upon it and how that makes me feel. I want that to translate to the site. And so I think I'm actually going to go with kind of like a vintage old timey theme and maybe use bikes or like bikers um, as kind of a theme in here, too. So I think one of the most important things is to make sure that we get a photo that really um, brings across the energy that we want to. So I went through and looked at Unsplash for a while. Now, if this was a real client, I would either do photography myself or have them hire a photographer to get photographs of their actual coffee. But since this is just for my portfolio, Unsplash works. So I'll show you what I think my favorite photo was. This is what I really liked. Um, I think it would work really well for kind of that hero image, but it is a little crooked. Like I want this cup to be straight. So I'm just going to fix that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the other thing I was thinking is bringing in a lot of different paper elements. Um, I think that will give it sort of the vintage feel. Um, and I can kind of just picture people sitting outside, um, you know, they were kind of like making music. I can picture people writing down notes on sticky notes and just things like that. Very organic um, community in nature. So let's kind of see what we have. I've gathered resources over time from places like Creative Market um, and things like that that we can pull from. So I'm just going to pull over a few of those elements to show you what I'm talking about. So here are just some of the elements. Now that I'm looking like at this, I think it would be really cool to make one of these tapes into like the button. So I am just going to mask this out and we'll keep this over here. I like this sticky note as well to use for something. And I also like this kind of ripped edge. Um, and I also wanna look for something like lined paper. So let's find that. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, so I kind of like that these are all different colors. They're all very earthy. Um, we can always go into Photoshop and change some of these colors if we want. But honestly, I think they're kind of working. So my idea was to bring this in and kind of tilt it to give us um, just a little bit of visual interest and so that it just looks like the paper is sort of laying on top. I think that could be cool. Okay. I think I like that angle, but we need to um, kind of fix this situation. So I'm just going to copy this over and reflect it. Okay, I think this is kind of cool. 
And then maybe for the footer, we have like something like this at the bottom. We obviously don't know yet, um, you know, exactly how long this page is gonna be, but I'm just thinking ahead. Um, yeah, I think that could actually look really cool. So, okay, now that we sort of have like a bit of a skeleton for this in the style that we want, let's figure out the content because that's very important, right? So we want to have the logo somewhere and I think I'm probably going to hop into Illustrator and um, design a quick new logo. Nothing crazy, but something that fits the vibe more. Now I also want, um, I'm thinking like a tagline would be cool. Um, so I might brainstorm a few taglines so that when you come into the website, you have like something to read and remember and draw you in. I do want to include this little blurb because um, even if it's not this exact blurb, a lot of times it's good to include a paragraph just for SEO purposes. Um, so I will include this. And then I was also thinking it would be nice to have like an order now button. So that's not a functionality at the moment, but I think it would be cool um, if you could like order ahead, especially since this is the type of place where you might stop by like during a bike ride or whatever, you might wanna like quickly stop by after ordering ahead. And then I'm thinking um, on their website, they have some like user generated content and then I'm thinking on their website, they have some user generated content. They have some Instagram photos on their site. So I was thinking that we could bring those in as well, just above the footer maybe. So first things first, let's create this button. So I am going to make this maybe like 50 pixels high. Okay. And then let's grab some text. So they have up here, join the team really big. So that seems important to them. So let's use that. And I was looking at fonts earlier. I think I want to use Attila Sans for this. And 16 is usually good for a button. I will group these together and then create a component. And we'll call it button. And then instead of using black text, I might want to use like brown just to give it a bit more warmth. So I'm just going to sample from here until I find something that I really like. I think that's good. Okay, so here we have a button and I think I'm going to use an instance of this button up here. So we'll do 60 pixels from each side. I think that's looking good. And now let's work on the tagline. So I came up with everyone's favorite So what I came up with is everyone's favorite pull-off spot. I feel like that's kind of fun. And then I think I want to make this all caps. Nice. And then I want to give it a color that is, yeah, not stark white. I think this is nice. And then since it's a bit hard to read, um, just in front of this image. I'm going to just create a rectangle um, and send it back there. And again, I'm gonna grab like a brown color and just do a pretty light opacity to make that background image a bit darker and moodier. I think that's cool. I like this. Okay, now instead of doing the nav at the top, I'm gonna do something a little different and put it just below here. 
So let's do a menu. And we can make these smaller. Make sure we're using the same off white. Let's do menu about an hours. Okay. Now I'll just make sure these are spaced evenly. Centered. And I feel like so that they definitely look clickable, I'm going to make them underlined. Okay, now I think would be a good time to transition over into Illustrator and figure out what we want to do with this logo. So I already grabbed an illustration that I really like. I basically just got a free Adobe stock image and image traced it and messed with it a little bit. Again, not something I would normally do for a logo design. I would spend hours and hours sketching, <laughs> but it's really fun, honestly, to just kind of piece together what you can find um, into something even better. So anyway, let's start with this and um, let's also start with our text. So I know I want to use the same Attila Sands for like coffee house, but when it comes to Nixon's. I know that I want that to be bigger and I definitely don't want it to be the same font. So I am going to find a font that I like and we'll see how we go. Okay, I think I like this. This is Atelier, Atelier Femme. I think that's how you say it in italics. Um, and so what I'm picturing is this in some sort of lighter color, sort of in the background. So let's see here. Yeah, I'm picturing like a bit of an overlay situation like this. Yeah, I think that could be really cute. And then not necessarily in grayscale, but let's just bring this over to Figma and then we can mess around with the colors. So now we have this here. I'm thinking I want it centered, so let's just center it. And then when it comes to the colors here, let's do this Nixon's in this same color. And then I think we can do this the same, but at a very low opacity, like, yeah, like 30 or 40. Subtle is okay here. Yeah, that's nice. And then I'm thinking we can do this in a bit of a darker color just so that it recedes to the background a bit more. Like that's kind of nice. Okay, I like it. So this will be kind of like the home um, button as well. So this should be clickable. Okay, I think I like this. So now let's move on to this section here. So like I said, I think I wanna have some sort of paragraph here. Um, so let's just see. Yeah, I think that placement will be good. And then I'm just going to copy this paragraph over and use the text styles that um, will go with this new site. Now, before we do that, let's actually save some of these text styles. Okay, I think that's nice. So now, like I said, I want to bring like bicycles into it. And much like I found this um, coffee cup illustration, I also found a few bicycle illustrations um, that I think are going to be cool. Okay, so here they are. I found them on Creative Market and I just searched like vintage um, bicycle illustration and a few cool things came up. So I think that these will be nice. I'm picturing like 
just coming out of the side here, maybe. Yeah, and then I'm trying to think, let's grab the same color we used. Oops. Yeah, like that could be cool. And we'll save this one maybe for the footer. And then I wanted to do something um, kind of unique um, with this. So here, I'll show you what I'm picturing. I'm actually using kind of a cool tool for this. So I have this tool called Speed Cut. And so I'm just going to do, what is it? think let's try portrait cutout and you literally just like kind of screenshot it and then it removes the background for you and you can just like drag it right in so let's see yeah that worked okay i feel like these things the beans don't look very good so i'm gonna try that again Okay, so here we go. I think that this is gonna be cool. And the reason that I wanted to do this is like a cool background for another button. Like I said, I want this button to say, order ahead. And we need to make sure that this is center aligned. There we go. Okay, kind of fun, right? Now let's add some of those Instagram images. Okay, I feel like this is looking so good. Just the last thing that I want to do is animate this button a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to go into like the main component and I am going to add a variant and we'll call the property animation. This will be default and this will be hover. And so on hover, I want the button to just like wiggle a little bit just so that it shows you know a little bit of movement so i am just going to rotate this and then this is a mask so that's why it's a little wonky but we're going to rotate that as well okay and then when we go into well, actually, let's set the animation from the component level. So we'll go into prototype and I'll do add interaction. And then while hovering, we'll do change to animation hover. Okay, so then let's like see how that looks when we play it. Yeah, see that? I think that's cute and it just adds a lot to it. And since we did it on the component level, everywhere where we have this button, it will do it. So yay, now that's about it. The best thing about this exercise, like I said, is I can use it to build my client list. Business owners don't respond well to cold emails that were clearly copy pasted to dozens of other folks. This is the exact opposite approach. Don't just tell them what you can do, show them. If you like this video, I actually did a whole series of them over on my channel, so make sure to check that out. They'll be linked in the description. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.